Hello mga mopsies! Welcome back to my channel. Now for today's video, I am taking you guys back into the ocean to see its wonders. My first ever crochet top tutorial on this channel was the Mermaid Dreams crochet top and I thought that it would be fitting to take you guys back, this time appreciating the beautiful goddess of the sea of Hawaii named Namaka. So I actually named this tutorial after her and made several variations so you guys can make whatever versions of it for yourself. Please don't forget to follow me on my other social media accounts and if you haven't subscribed yet, please click the subscribe button. Without further ado, here comes Namaka's purse. For this tutorial, I made sure to test this out on different hooks and different kinds of yarns. So if you want to change the size, here is the cheat sheet for you. And I would also be teaching you different variations of this pattern so that you can make it into a purse or you can make it into a shell case. For this demo, I am actually using hand dyed cotton yarns from Buffy Subayan and a 4mm hook. Of course, I'll be putting all the links at the description box below if you want to get the yarns for yourself. But we will start this project off with a magic ring and then we will put 6 single crochets in that magic ring. After your six single crochets, connect the magic ring and then make three chains and this will serve as your first double crochet. Within the same stitch, you have to work two more double crochets and for this round, what we're gonna do is we're just going to put three double crochets on each of the stitches. But the total of this is gonna be 21 because we are going to place an extra three more stitches at the joint of the magic ring. So after you've done the 21 stitches, I will teach you guys on what to do so that this will look seamless. So all you have to do is get your scissors, cut the yarn at this point, and then fasten off or pull the yarn through the final loop. Now you have to turn your work around at this point and then go to the double crochet closest to the chain three. Put your hook right there and then get your loose yarn and then pull it through. After that, go back on the other side and then pull it from the hoops that I am showing right here. Now what I do in order to secure this at this point is after pulling the yarn from this part, I pull it back down again so that it will be very very secured. This is the method that I use so that it would really become seamless but if you just want to stick with the 21 stitches it's okay to just have to put like you just have to secure your stitches and I usually don't cut it from this point because I make the extra stitches or the extra yarn as my markers because this is going to be the center part of our shell purse we have to make a pair. So we already made one, we just need to make another one and this will go right in the middle as you can see there. So make sure that you count all your stitches, make sure that it's 21. And as you can see right here, I place the last three stitches on the connecting part or the lower part of the chain three. 
at the beginning of the magic ring. So at this point, you can either do the same method and then reconnect the yarn, but on my case, I just go to the top of the chain 3 and then make the 13 chains from there. After you've made the 13 chains, get the other yarn or the other circle and then with the wrong side facing the other way, you insert your hook from the right side to the left and then make sure that your yarn is on the left side so that when you actually take it out on the other side, the yarn will stay hidden and then you maintain the right side and the wrong side. So after that, and this is going to be your practice every time, make one chain and then slip stitch on the chain or the stitch on the center part and then that is what you'll do for the initial row after the slip stitch make one single crochet follow it up by a half double crochet and seven double crochets as you can see here After the seven double crochets, make a half double crochet, a single crochet, a slipped stitch before connecting it to the other circle. This is the first part of our purse. After every row, you need to chain one and then turn, make a slip stitch, but this time, put it on the back loop only. So after every row with the double crochets, you have to make another row going back with only single crochets. But remember that moving forward, we're only putting this on the back loops only. Remember how we didn't cut the strangler yarns when we began the other row? I made sure to keep them so that I would know which part is actually the wrong side. And remember that when you're connecting this to the wrong side, always put your yarn in the front side just like what I'm doing here. So instead of getting yarn from the back, I put it in the front, put my hook through, and then get yarn from that and close the row. Chain one as always and then turn your work and as always make a slip stitch and we will start our next row. For this next row, instead of just putting one single crochet after the slip stitch, we are going to make an increase. So that's two single crochets in the first stitch and then make your half double crochet. And then after the half double crochet, make three double crochets. So that's one, two, and then three. And on the next stitch instead of making another double crochet we make a triple increase so we put three double crochets on that center stitch and then make another three double crochets after that a half double crochet and then two single crochets before the slip stitch so basically we're mirroring the first part of our row and towards the last part of the row After connecting the row again, slip stitch and then 
single crochet on the back loops only and if you did this row right you should have a total of 15 single crochets for this next row we will chain one and then slip stitch as usual and then we will make an increase again for this part so that's two single crochet and one crochet spot and then another single crochet that makes three single crochets in the first part make a half double crochet and then because of the increase that we made on the other row we are now going to have nine double crochets mirroring the other part or the first part of this row we're gonna do another half double crochet one single crochet and then two single crochets in one stitch now this is a common problem every time i'm working with this project it's that the last stitch which is supposedly the slip stitch always gets stuck so if you do encounter that just use your needle to loosen the strand and then just crochet as usual so after this row you know the drill chain one and slip stitch as usual and this time because of the increases that we did on this row we are going to have a total of 17 single crochets and then a slip stitch before you end the row starting on the last row that we are going to make an increase now remember the stitch count for this row because we are just going to repeat that on the entire project so as you can see here I did the usual slip knot and then on the first two single crochets you make an increase so that's two single crochets on the first stitch two single crochets in the second stitch and then on the third stitch you do one single crochet and then after that just do the usual half double crochet and then the nine double crochets after that mirror this on the next side so after doing the nine double crochets just do one half double crochet a single crochet two single crochets in one stitch and then two single crochets on the other stitch slip stitch on the end of the row and then that's basically this row in general For the next row after that, you know the drill, we're just going to single crochet the entire row except for the slip stitches on the first and last end. But this time, the total single crochets would be 21 because of the increases that we did. Okay, so we are just going to recreate the previous two rows. So. To recap, you need five single crochets on the first part after the slip stitch and after your five single crochets, half double crochet and then make nine double crochets and another half double crochet and then single crochet five times and do the slip stitch. Now, I really have to advise you guys on counting your stitches, especially on the single crochet part because a lot of times when I'm doing this project, I actually don't count anymore and sometimes I make mistakes by adding additional stitches and then the next row after that gets pretty messed up. So please, please, please don't forget to count your stitches as you're doing this because basically you're just going to repeat the last two rows that I showed you over and over again for the entire circumference or the entire uh, stitches left in our center circle. 
As I've said, uh, for the next few rows, all you need to do to complete this project is to repeat the last two rows. So you're always going to have 21 stitches, single crochets going back, and you're always going to have 21 stitches consisting of the single crochets, the half double crochets, and the double crochets. But the only difference here is you will have to leave four stitches on the circle blank if you want to use it as a wallet. Now the reason for this is if you're going to make a wallet and you're doing this in smaller sizes, you would have to leave a bigger opening so that you can get your money and you can put your zippers properly. Anything less than the four blank stitches, it will be harder to put in the zipper. So I really recommend to just leave those blank. But if you're making a bigger version, just like this shell container that I made, you would just have to go the entire circle and make the repeats on those. So basically, that's just it. I'm actually selling these pouches on my Instagram account and I priced them at 200 pesos. I have a video on how I price my products that you might want to watch. But other than that, see you guys on the next video. Bye, Mama Mamshis!